Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shalom, family. I welcome everybody in the name of Jesus. You are very much welcome in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I welcome you in the name of Jesus. Shekitha James, you're welcome in Jesus' mighty name. Judy Lewis, you're welcome. Last first, you're welcome. Tonya Agabi, you're welcome. I welcome everybody in the name of Jesus. Family, you are very much welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Please, if this is your first time coming live today, I welcome you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. My name is Ethel Betangba, and this is prayer and the prophetic with Pastor Ethel. You are very much welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You've been family of course, you know that I love you so much. And my prayer for you is that the good that blesses you, uplifts you, rewards you of your consistency. Let there be a success in your life. Let there be a great impact and a great encounter in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We celebrate God for every minister of God that is present here today. I celebrate God for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please do not forget to like. Do not forget to share. And if you're just coming for your first time, please kindly subscribe and join this amazing family. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We will We'll rejoice and be glad in this amazing day. In the next few minutes, we are going to be praying, giving God the glory because I believe that God will be touching and transforming the life of somebody as never before. And you are that person in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Please, can we raise up our voices as we begin to worship the Lord? Can we worship the King of glory? Can we worship the ancients of days? Can we worship the I am that I am? Somebody give the Lord praise and begin to give God glory in the mighty name of Jesus. God is worthy of our praises. Begin to worship God, somebody. Lord, we have come to worship you. We have gathered here together in your name. We begin to glorify your name, Jesus. We begin to exalt your name, Jesus. We begin to magnify your name, Jesus. Come on, somebody raise up those voices. You are the mighty man in Bartu. You are the ancients of days. You are the I am that I am. Come on, somebody, raise up your voices. Begin to worship the King of glory. Begin to worship the great I am that I am. Begin to worship the ancients of days. We worship you, Lord Jesus. None can be compared unto you, the master of the universe, the bright and the morning star. Ula bendele kambaladia, medusa brende kosia banatande, erebedo shatala bonza di. We worship you, King of Glory. Come on, Holy Ghost. 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 We worship you, Jesus. Oh, Palabosi Anakantea, the God who leaves the 99 to chase after me. Oh, Banako Labrambo Seniata. Ah, Jesus, we worship you. 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 We worship you, King of Glory. We give you all the praise, Lord, and we give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. There is none like you, Abba. 
There is none like you, Abba. There is none like you, Abba. There is none like you, Abba. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. There is none like you, Abba. There is none like you, Jesus. Hunamako satayaba. E zibra de basandia kalabo shate. Le premo kosibana manta la hosa brentekea. We give you all the praise, Lord. And we give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Right now, I want to come in agreement with everybody that is here. Whatever you have been trusting and believing God for, whatever you have been praying for God to do in your life, whatever you've been hoping, expecting, the Bible says, for the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short. Another translation says, for the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut off. I want to come in agreement with everybody that is here. Whatever you have been trusting and believing God for, whatever you have been praying for God to do in your life, what you have been expecting of the Lord in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus I come in agreement with everybody that is here let the Lord come true for you in the name of Jesus may God come true for you in the mighty name of Jesus I feel the presence of God in this meeting and make sure you are connected. May God come true for you in the name of Jesus. Every of your heart desires what you have been expecting of the Lord, what you have been trusting and believing God for, what you have been praying for God to do in your life. May God come true for somebody in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the Lord begin to come true for you. Let God begin to come true for you. Oh my goodness. I feel the power of God. I feel the power of God. I feel the power of God. Let the Lord begin to come true for you in the name of Jesus. Let God begin to come true for you. Oh, banama shatia banosa. Ele banaka sata la bente. Libra kato sa pene miandi. Ezua la branca tiata. May God come true for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I feel an excitement in my spirit. I feel an excitement in my spirit. Something good is about to happen. Ah, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Something dynamic is about to happen. Something powerful is about to happen. Somebody is about to celebrate. Oh, Kula Brande Ketea. You're about to receive a news that will make you say this call for a celebration. You are about to receive a news that will make you say this calls for a celebration. That is going to be your statement after that news. That will be your statement after that news. This call for a celebration because you're about to celebrate. You're about to jubilate. I see good news locating somebody. Come on. Ooh. I see good news locating somebody. I see good news locating somebody. I see good news locating somebody. Who is that person? Begin to receive it. Begin to receive. Begin to receive. Begin to receive. I am celebrating. Good news is coming. Good news is locating me. I am celebrating. Somebody type it on the comment section. Make sure you are connecting yourself. Make that confession. Say good news is locating me. I am celebrating. Good news is locating me. I am celebrating. Good news is locating me. I am celebrating. I feel an excitement in my spirit. I feel hope in my spirit. I feel elevation in my spirit. And that is what God is doing in the life of somebody. He's 
upgrading you. He's bringing hope into your spirit. The Lord is doing something amazing. Good news is locating you. Good news is locating you. Good news is locating you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I am celebrating. Where is this joy coming from? What is going on? Come on, Holy Ghost. Where is the joy coming from? Where is the joy coming from? Where is the joy? Oh, my goodness. Where is the joy coming from? Come on. Something great is about to happen. Something dynamic is about to happen. There is about to be celebration. There is about to be celebration. God is giving somebody relevance. I heard that so clear. <laughs> I heard that so clear. It was so clear and it was so loud. It was so clear and it was so loud. God is giving somebody relevance. Ho, ho. It was so clear and it was so loud. God says, where they left you, they will not meet you. They will not meet you where they left you. God is giving you relevance. I don't know who have minimized you. I don't know who have looked down on you. I don't know who have undermined you, who has given up on you. God is giving somebody relevance. God is giving somebody relevance. God is giving somebody. Oh, I see a lot of people connecting themselves with seeds. God bless everybody sowing seeds in the name of Jesus. God is giving somebody relevance. They will not meet you where they left you. They will not meet you where they left you. I heard it so clear. It was so loud. I don't know who God is speaking to, but the Lord brought you to this particular prophetic meeting just so you can understand who you are, just so you can have that hope again. There is somebody seated under the sound of my voice. Wherever you are, it's been from one thing to the other. It's been from one disappointment to the other. People have given up on you. People underestimate mates you. God is bringing relevance into your life. You know, when God was saying this to me, he brought about the story of Joseph. He brought about the story of Joseph. Joseph was a leader. He was an amazing person until he went into being a slave. You know, his own brothers could not believe in him and they became so jealous. They felt like, how can God raise you above us? So that is me disbelieving what God spoke to you. You know, when the Lord begins to tell you, you're going to have this breakthrough, you're going to have this happen to you. And then when you're trying to share, somebody's going to be like, oh, so God leaves all of us and wants to bless you. Oh, come on. I don't believe you. And that is what begins to happen when people don't believe you. They want to make everything that can kill your dream. They want to make everything that can kill your vision. And most of the times, the people who kill your vision are never far from you. The people who kill your dreams are never far from you. Those are people who are so close to you, my dear. There are people who are seated by you. The Bible says you cannot get into a strong man's house. You cannot get into a house and take over that house unless you bind the strong man. You don't need somebody outside to bind the strong man. You need somebody inside to bind the strong man in that house. So his brothers looked at him and said, we are bigger than you. We look amazing more than you. And God wants to choose you to be a leader over us. Like, come on, Joseph, are you, are you reasoning at all? Are you understanding what you're saying? And they said, here comes the dreamer. And we are going to plan to do this and that to him. So that is what the Lord started reminding me about. He spoke about the life of Joseph. His brother sold him into a strange land. You know, when God begins to speak to you and then problems start happening in your life, that makes you question the voice of God. Have you ever got into that point in your life where you begin to question God's voice? Where you begin to question the, the message of the prophet. Where you begin to question the prophetic dream that you had. Now, now everything around you starts being a question. You start putting a question mark to everything around you. Oh, did I really hear the Lord well? So was the prophet actually talking to me? Or oh, probably the dream wasn't for me. Oh, maybe the vision wasn't for me. You know, so that is what begins to happen when God speaks to you and then you notice that your life starts going here and there. 
So his brother said, here comes the dreamer. We are going to frustrate his dreams. The devil doesn't attack giftless people. The devil only attacks gifted people. I say it again. The devil doesn't attack giftless people. The devil only attacks gifted people. And that is it. Gifted people. That is it. So the moment the devil realized how gifted you are, the moment the devil realized that you now know who you are, you, you've understood your purpose, the moment you discover purpose, you start going through so many battles in your life. You start going through so many attacks in your life. The one beautiful thing about attacks is attacks makes you stronger. They draw you closer to God. You did not know how prayerful you were. You did not know you were a prayer warrior until the attacks came. You did not know you could do a lot of things. You did not know how strong you were until the attacks started coming in. So Joseph had to survive all alone. Not having a mother or not having a father to look up to, to say, oh, this is what is happening to me. And somebody starts pampering them or somebody to encourage them and tell them everything is going to be okay. You know, sometimes in life, you just need somebody who can tell you it's going to be fine. You need somebody who can just console you, even if you're not feeling it a bit. You just want to hear somebody talk. And that was what Joseph did not have. Sold into a strange land and he's all alone. And gets to Potiphar's house and working there as a servant. Just when Joseph felt like he's had a roof over his head. You know, sometimes you get to a stage where you just need shelter. You don't need comfort. So you just, you don't, you don't want to be comfortable. You just want to be okay. Sometimes it gets to that point in your life. You don't want to be comfortable. You just want to be okay. Like, I don't need a big house. I just need a bed to lay my head on. Mm. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need a luxury place. I just need a place where I can sit. So when it came to the point where Joseph was trying to be happy, like, okay, right now I have shelter. So I, I, just, I just need to serve these people and have shelter because I was thrown into the gutters. I was thrown into a hole and I nearly died, but I had a rescue. So, okay, I just, I just, I just, I just need a roof over my head. It doesn't need to be okay. I don't need to have luxury chairs. I don't need to have luxury settings in my house. I just need to be okay. So when it got to the point where Joseph felt like he was becoming okay, oh, something happened again. Something happened again. And that is what is happening in the life of somebody right now. So the Lord spoke to you and you were so okay and you were so fine. And it got to the stage where battles, confrontations, attacks, disappointment, a lot of things started going wrong in your life. And you started praying. And just when it felt like everything was beginning to be okay again, just when it felt like, oh, I wanted to love again. I wanted to smile again. And something comes up. So Potiphar's wife meets Joseph and speaks to Joseph that I want you to put your integrity on the line. You know, there are always going to be tests. There will always be that temptation. Joseph, I want you to put your integrity on the line. So God promised that I'm going to be a leader. But I can help you get into the place of the leadership position. Oh my goodness. Who am I speaking to? Where the Lord spoke to you and promised you, and then the devil manipulates you to compromise into getting your promise. <laughs> so the position is mine, and I don't need to compromise to get into that position because God is going to find a way to put me into the position. So Potiphar's wife comes and says, oh, I want to help you, Joseph, but I need your integrity to be on the line. I need your integrity. I'm going to to have to need you to compromise and the Lord sent me to speak to those people whom right now the enemy is wanting you to compromise there is a promise that God has promised you there is something that you know this is my place this is my right for position the promotion is mine the job is mine but somebody out there wants you to compromise they want you to put your integrity on the line they want you to tell a lie they want you to tell a lie but you know that is not the right thing to do 
you know i was i was following up um i i was trying to to do some documents here in 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 dubai and and then i had to in dubai you have to do cancellation for one before you do the uh, the next one and then the person following up my documents he told me to tell a lie he said just tell them that you don't know where your other partners are and then i asked him i said must i lie I said, because I'm uncomfortable, I can't tell a lie. Of course, I know where my other partners are, but I want to leave them. I want to be alone. And then he later on said, yes, you can just tell them the truth. And then I, 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 when, when I sat to myself, I started thinking, what it was, it was going to be stupid. The truth was better. The truth was better. Like the lie was so foolish and stupid. He said, just say that you don't know where your partners are. And then while we were driving there, I said, I can't say that. I can't say that. Must I, I said, I can't, I can't say that because I know where these people are. So that's the problem with me. <laughs> that's the problem with me. I said, I can't say that. And then he said, fine, you can just tell them you want to leave them and you want to start something on your own. I said, that's better. Of course, and that's the truth. I want to leave them to start something on my own. So simple. So what needs you to compromise your integrity? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I'm not, I'm not judging somebody here who has made a mistake before. I'm not a perfect human being. I've made several mistakes. But as I grow, I want to correct my mistakes. I want to right my wrong. I want to put straight where I fought at. As you grow, you're going to notice that your integrity and the promise of God is everything. You don't need a help to put your integrity on the line for that promise to come to pass. If God wants you to be there, he will find a way to put you there. He will find a way to put you there. So Joseph gets to a place where he could compromise with Potiphar's wife to get into a better position. You know, women are powerful. A woman can make you and a woman can break you if she decides. I'm telling you, my dear friends, a woman can make you and a woman can break you if she decides. If a woman decides to be on your case, ha, run. But if she decides to happily be on your case, she will support every part of you. But if a woman doesn't want you, just leave it. Just leave it because she's going to embarrass you. She's going to disgrace you. But if a woman wants you, she will not embarrass you. She will not disgrace you. She will help you. So that is the, that is the life. So Joseph gets to a place where he felt like, oh, I'm becoming better. I just want to be okay. And then Potiphar's wife comes and said, I want you to compromise. And Joseph says, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. And the Bible says, what did Potiphar's wife did? He fr she framed up Joseph. Joseph ended up in the prison. Ended up in the prison. There is somebody right now, just when you felt like God was coming through for you, things started becoming worse. You went back to what it seems like square one. Just when they felt like things were becoming good for you, like things were beginning to be reshaped for you, everything went down. Just when it felt like, oh my goodness, the light was beginning to shine again. Everything went down. Those are the people I came to speak to today. And you're the person I came to pray with today. Joseph got into prison, not knowing that God was writing the script. God was writing the script. God was directing the story. If Joseph would have been comfortable in Potiphar's house, how would he have gained relevance? How would he have been known? He would have just been known as a slave boy. A slave boy who have no relevance. What do you want to say in your master's house? No, tell me. What do you want to tell your master? Tell me. What do you want to tell your master? Because Your position is to sweep the house. Keep the house clean. So what do you want to say? So God was redirecting the story. He was writing the script for Joseph. And that is what God is doing in the life of somebody right now. You're feeling so downcast. You're feeling so bad. But God says he's rewriting your story. He's redirecting the scripts for you. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, 
all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. People have mocked at you. People have laughed at you. They might have embarrassed you. They might have disappointed you. They might have betrayed you. Come on. God is in the story. Ah! God is in the story. Somebody type it in the comment section. If I'm talking to you, say God is in my story. God is in my story. Oh, Jesus. I feel an excitement in the spirit because there was no way jo Joseph would have met Potiphar to say, Potiphar, oh, master, I want to tell you that I interpret dreams. So like how would Joseph have gotten audience? How? How? God was in the story. It doesn't matter what you're going through right now. God is in your story. Oh, God is in my story. I feel excited. God is in my story. God is in my story. He's fixing things for me. God is in my story. People are insulting you. You don't have a job. God is in your story. They are saying you don't have a child. God is in your story. They are saying you haven't gotten married yet. God is in your story. They are saying you've not increased in that ministry yet. God is in your story. What are they saying about you? That health, God is in your story. Financial lack, God is in your story. Family query. God is in your story. Come on, Holy Ghost. God is in my story. God is in my story. God bless you are sowing seeds. This is a powerful sermon. It's 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 a it's a it, this is this is knowledge that is going to take you far. God is in your story. So he was directing the scripts for Joseph, and Joseph had no idea. He had no idea. Found himself in prison. And in prison was the only place where he could talk. <laughs> you know, <laughs> prison, you know, because prison, it felt like there are wasted people there. So that's the only place he can talk. So when we all are bored, we just need somebody who can tell us stories. So sometimes when you're down, you're depressed, you just need something that can, that can, that can uh, 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 make your mind busy. They can make your ears busy. So in prison, we are just there. And the Bible says one day, one day, the baker and the cup bearer, the two of them had dreams. And Joseph interpreted the dreams. Told this person you will be killed. Told the other person you will be restored. And that was, the, that, was that. that was how his life changed. That was the beginning of a new era in the life of Joseph. There is somebody, God is about to set an opportunity for you to rise up. God is about to set an opportunity for you to step forward. He will set a pace that will give you relevance. A dream interpretation changed the life of a human being. What did he say? When you go before the king, remember me. That was all. When you go before the king, remember me. The Lord is about to give you a great opportunity. Somebody will remember you. There is an opportunity that is about to show your relevance. There is an opportunity that is about to show your value. There is an opportunity that is about to show who you truly are. People did not know who you truly are until you got to that mess. Even you did not know who you truly were until you got to that mess. When you are in a mess, the only thing and the only person you look up to is God. The only thing you want to do is to be in the presence of God. Because when you are in a mess, you just want to communicate with God. There is no family that comes to, uh, to your rescue as, the as in the life of Joseph. He had no family. He had no friend. The only person he could look up to was God. The Bible says, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher, the starter and the, and the ending, the starting, the beginning and the end, the author and the finisher, the the beginning and the end, the beginning, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. There is somebody who is here and saying, Jesus is my only direction right now. Jesus is the only hope I have right now. Somebody, that is the only hope you have right now. The only thing you do is you want to pray. You want to seek the face of the Lord. You want to hear God because you're feeling like you've been so shattered. You've been so battered and it's been from one thing to the other. 
So when the Lord told me he's giving you relevance, he brought to me the story of Joseph. And he says, that is what somebody has been going through. Your life has been that story of Joseph. When you felt so bad, when you felt so abandoned, when you felt so disappointed, when you felt so betrayed. God cannot give you relevance if you already have relevance. So he only gives people who do not have relevance, relevance. <laughs> this is deep. God cannot give you relevance if you own already have relevance. So he only looks for people who do not have relevance and he gives them relevance. Where they left you, they will not meet you. His brother left him in a position of a slave. They didn't meet him in that same position of a slave. His brothers left him in a position of betrayer. They didn't meet him in that position of betrayer. There are, there are people who have written off, of me or off on you. They have looked down on you. They look at you like you're nobody. They've looked at you like you don't have anything to offer. They've looked at you like you're just a nobody. Where they left you, they will not meet you. When God gives a man relevance, he takes that person to the top. And the people who always comes on later always regrets. They always come on later to regret. They always come on later to regret. Where they left you, they will not meet you. Where they left you, they will not meet you. There are people who have insulted you. God says he's giving you relevance. He's giving you relevance. He's giving you relevance. Never let people meet you where they left you. Never meet, let people find you where they left you. Never. Do everything possible to leave that position. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about a, as a place as in a place. If you met me when I was in, in, as in a one-stage position, when you're coming back, you should meet me in a two-stage position. That's what I'm talking about. When you're coming back, you should meet me a better person. Never let people meet you in that same place where they left you. Be an amazing person. Be a wonderful person. God is giving you relevance. God is giving you relevance. I see a lot of people confirming this message on the comment section. I see so many people confirming this message on the comment section. God is giving you relevance. I see a wind of restoration upon people. I see a wind of restoration upon people. I see a wind of restoration upon people. God is giving you relevance. They will not meet you where they left you. They will not meet you where they left you. God is giving you relevance. Oh, Shabana Kosia Kataya. I see a wind of restoration. A wind, a heavy wind of restoration. If I'm speaking to you, type it in the comment section. Connect yourself, make that confession. Say, God is giving me relevance. I feel so happy in my spirit. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Lord. I feel, I feel an excitement in my spirit. I feel so happy. Goodness gracious, Lord. I feel, I feel good. Oh my God. I feel amazing. God is giving you relevance. God bless everybody sowing seeds. God bless you all connecting with seeds. God is giving you relevance. What you confess, you become. What you confess, you become. God is in my story. Mm, I love that part when the Holy Spirit ministered to me. He said, God is in your story. And we didn't. I didn't know this all along. And oh, maybe you knew that God was in your story, but I didn't know that God was in my story. He's writing the scripts. He's in my story. He's writing my story. He's giving me relevance. He's working on things one step at a time. One step at a time. God is giving me relevance. I see a heavy wind of restoration. And I want to pray for somebody right now. I see a lot of confirmations in the comment section. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Who says, God, I've been through a lot. 
I want to pray for you who's been through a lot. I want to pray for you who, who has who has that thing in your heart that you say, God, I thought you had forsaken me. I thought you had abandoned me. Now I know. Now I understand that you're in my story. The Bible says Job spoke. Job said, even though he slay me, yet will I not forsake him. I am still going to trust in the Lord. You know, sometimes the devil begins to manipulate you into you thinking that you're all alone. No, God is in your story. You are not alone, honey. You are not alone, honey. God is in your story. I am not alone. God is in my story. I feel so happy. Come on, where is this coming from? I am not alone. God is in my story. You are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. God is in your story. He's giving you relevance. In the name of Jesus. Are we ready for the prayer of restoration? God bless your seeds. God bless your seed. I want to make a prayer of restoration over the life of somebody that is here. In three days from now, you will see God come true for you. I want to make a prayer of restoration. I feel I feel so much excitement in my spirit. And I don't know where this excitement is coming from. But this, there is good news. There is good news. There is good news. I want to make a prayer of restoration over everybody who believes. I want to make a prayer of restoration over everybody who believes there is good news. There is good news. I want to make a prayer of restoration over everybody that is here who believes there is good news. There is good news coming. There is good news. In the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus, I speak restoration over your life. I speak restoration over your life. In the next three days, 72 hours from now, let there be a confirmation and let there be a testimony in your life. I speak restoration over your life. In the next three days from now, 72 hours from now, let there be a confirmation and let there be a heavy testimony over your life. In the name of Jesus, God is doing this for you. God is doing this for you. God is doing this for you. Three days from now, you will see another dimension of your life. You will receive a heavy confirmation three days from now, 72 hours from now. You will see God come true for you powerfully. You will see God come true for you mightily. There is about to be a change. There is about to be a transformation. God is coming true for you three days from now. Three days from now, a mighty restoration. There is a wind of restoration. There is a wind of restoration. There is a wind of restoration. There is, a, I feel, I feel so happy. <laughs> oh my goodness, something great is happening. Something dynamic is happening. Something serious is happening. A wind of restoration. Oh, you're not alone. God is in your story. You are not alone, my darling. You are not alone. Wherever you are, put your hand on your chest. Put your hand on your chest. Make this confession. Say, I am not alone. God is in my story. Say it, somebody. I am not alone. God is in my story. For the third time, say it. I am not alone. God is in my story. Ah, kola branadi shatana makosa. You are not alone. God is in your story. God is in your story. Something amazing is happening. Something dynamic is happening. Something miraculous is coming to somebody. Something great is coming to somebody. Oh, hello, Banakata. He's giving you relevance. God is giving you relevance at your job site. God is giving you relevance in that country. God is giving you, begin to name, name your places of relevance. Go ahead and begin to name them. 
Go ahead, go ahead. Name those places of relevance. Go ahead and begin to name them. God is giving you relevance. God is giving, begin to name them. Go ahead, begin to name your places of relevance. He's giving you relevance in that marriage. He's giving you relevance in that relationship. He's giving you relevance in that ministry. He's giving you relevance. Oh, wherever you are, begin to name it. Oh, Shabanakosa, relevant in your company. Begin to name it. God is giving you relevance. Somebody's receiving relevance. God is giving me relevance. Oh, in your finances. Oh, in your ministry. I see those on the comment sessions. Your workplace, your relationship, your family. Come on, Holy Ghost. I feel the power of God. Your job, he's doing that. He's doing that. He's doing that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, the industries. Oh, my God. Your business, your finances, your career. Come on, Holy Ghost. God is giving you relevance in your marriage. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Your ministry, your workplace. Thank you, Lord. Come on, oh, Shanti, God is giving you relevance. Things will never be the same. Your paupers, music, children, ministry, business, finances, come on. He's doing that for you. He's giving you relevance. Things will never be the same again. You walk home, Kwanazi. Things will never be the same again. Oh, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 4 said, There is hope for a living dog more than a dead lion. You see, this is a beautiful season, and it's a better season to pick up yourself again. It's a better season. It's a better season to renew covenants. It's a great season. People will be receiving relevance. People will be receiving relevance. They will not meet you where they left you. They left you in shame. They will not meet you in shame. They left you in poverty. They will not meet you in poverty. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. They left you in disappointment. They will not meet you in disappointment. God is giving you relevance in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Relevance in your online job. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the couch of heaven is blessing. So I want to pray and bless everybody in the name of Jesus. You're there, you're led to sow a seed. You want to give an offering. You want to pay your tithes. You want to become a member. You want to make donations. Kindly go ahead and do whatsoever you're led to do. God is giving you relevance. 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 God is giving you relevance. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Tonya Agabi. DC, God bless your seed. God is giving you relevance in the name of Jesus. Kwanazi, God bless your seed. God is giving you relevance in the name of Jesus. Yani, God bless your seed. Yani, God is giving you relevance in the name of Jesus. Robin Self, God bless your seed. God is giving you relevance in the name of Jesus. Michelle Belt, God bless your seed. God is giving you relevance in the name of Jesus. Cecilia Walker. God bless your seed. God is giving you relevance in the name of Jesus. Gail, God bless your seed. God is giving you relevance in the name of Jesus. Lisa Tugas, God bless your seed. God is giving you relevance in the name of Jesus. Makitha Campos, God bless your seed. God is giving you relevance in the name of Jesus. Shekitha James, God bless your seed. God is giving you relevance in the name of Jesus. Aretha Sellers, God bless your seed. God is giving you relevance, a beautiful end in the name of Jesus. Robin Self, God bless your seed, your tithes. God is giving you relevance. God is giving you relevance. Relevance. God is giving me relevance in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's giving you relevance. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless everybody who have sown seeds through PayPal, through Catch App.
your super charts your super stickers god bless you all in the name of jesus amen and tagging god bless you sit and tagging god is giving you relevance in the name of jesus amen what leaves your hands never leave your life what leaves your accounts never leave your life the bible says whatsoever a man sow it he shall reap it oh people are still connecting themselves with seeds i'm giving us two minutes to do that God bless your seed. Richard Shrotha, God is giving you relevance. Richard Shrotha, in the name of Jesus. God is giving me relevance in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, powerfully, family. God bless you abundantly. He's giving you relevance in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cast his face to shine on you. May he be gracious to you and may he give you peace. The shalom of the Lord. Nothing may seem, nothing broken. I love you so much. I do. I love you so much. I love you so, 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 so much. I do. Keep praying for me, please. Call my name in the place of your prayers. Keep praying for me. Keep trusting the Lord for me. Nancy Marnie, God bless your seed. God is giving you relevance, Nancy, in the name of Jesus. He's doing it for somebody. Things are changing. He's coming through for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you so much. And by the special grace of God, I'll see you all in our next prayer session. God is in your story. You are not alone. And God is giving you relevance. I love you so much. Bye-bye. God is giving me relevance. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you.